Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic 2015. So at the end of my last episode, I had uh, beaten the slivers finally with my new um, my new removal, Black Road removal deck. Um, and then we'd also beaten the mirror matchup by switching back to my, um, so the Cruel Reflection deck. For some reason, I don't know why you start off with 17 health. Doesn't really explain why, you just do. So we're on to the Anaki Guardian, so we're going to try and uh, make our way into the tomb. Uh, I've switched back up to black to back to my back black red removal deck because I'm quite enjoying playing with that at the moment. So you arrive at the tomb only only to be confronted by an ancient spirit of a crazed Anaki shaman. Amid cackling laughter, he tells you that the prophecy is being fulfilled. The World Slayer, a demon of great power, will cleanse Chandelar and Anaki will rise again. You have a bad feeling you know who the World Slayer is. I'm guessing that's Garrick, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming it is. So what have we got here then? So we've got three lands to start off with. Quest for the Grave Lord, Dead Weight, Gutter Snipe, and a Charm Breakers. Pretty good, pretty good start opening hand, if I do say so myself. Got a, a little bit of early game removal. Got a Gutter Snipe for doing damage directly to uh, to the face. And then what's he playing? So he's playing a Tormented Soul. Can't attack, can't block, and can't be blocked. Fair enough. So uh, unless I remove that, that's going to be doing one damage every turn. What's the little? It just can't be blocked. I wonder what that little uh, symbol, symbol meant. So... Uh, Excellent, the two red lands, what we like to see as well. I'll play the Swamp. I'll play Quest, quest for the Grave Lord quest, quest for the Grave Lord this turn. Um just because if I'm removing creatures such as a tormented soul using the dead weight, I'd rather get the bonus of getting the uh, quest counter on it as well. Let's see what he plays. Ah, so it's a red black um, mirror matchup. Interesting. So I'm wondering what kind of uh yeah, don't show again. I Unblockable is fairly uh, fairly easy to understand. So, oh, an ulcerate as well, very nice. So, I'll play the red land, and then we shall play the dead weight. No point playing the ulcerate on something that's a one-one. I may as well use something that's just a two-two. Get off the board. Get a quest counter on my quest for the grave lord. Plus, my ulcerate will activate my gutter snipe, whereas the dead weight does not because it's an enchantment, not a instant or sorcery. Whereas this is, which is pretty cool. So what have we got here then? A Reckless Brute Haste. Reckless Brute attacks each turn if able. So that's going to come into play this turn. Would be able to do three damage directly to my face. Not, not really much I can do about that right now, but... Uh, maybe should have kept the dead weight for that kind of thing, but that's nah, not the end of the world. He's going to be able to do damage to my face regardless, so... Here we go. Oh, nice, the August Brew. That's what I like to see. So I'm going to play the Radiant Fountain. Get a little bit of life gain. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to play the Gutter Snipe first. I'll wait to remove that until next turn, just because I want to take advantage of Gutter Snipe's um, ability to, to deal two damage to each opponent to the face every time I play an instant or sorcery. So, I may as well wait and play one of my removals um, once I've uh, got this down on the board so I get that extra added bonus. So, I'm going to skip blocking this turn. That, take the damage again. I'm going to go down to 15. It's not the end of the world, if I'm going to be brutally honest. Another Charm Breaker Devils. Could really do getting two more lands so I can start playing them. Uh, they're the only two in the deck, which happen to have uh, drawn. So I'm going to play the August Bree this turn. Um, so that's going to activate. That gets burnt. I do two damage to face. I get another quest counter on Quest of the Grave Lord, which is always cool. Which means I'm one step away from getting a 5 5 on the board, which is always good. Which means I'll be able to attack in every turn for 5 damage once I've killed off one of his creatures. Or even one of my creatures might get killed off. I don't know what's going to happen. My Guts Knight might be removed by one of his spells or something. Like I said, I don't know what's in this deck, so it will be interesting to see. Ah, he's got nothing. That's what I like to see. So, nothing to do this turn. I'm not exactly going to play an Ulcerate on my own creature, am I? So, we're just going to attack him for 2 damage. Hope that we draw it into uh, two lands fairly soon, so I can play, replay my Charm Breaker Devils, which will allow me to essentially, at the moment, keep pulling back my August Bree and then uh, swinging in for four damage every turn. So we've got him down to 14, so uh, we're finally on top. We've got the board control. Uh, he's got the land control, but that's about it. He doesn't seem to be able to play anything else, unless he's pulled something. Nope, there's more land for him. Oh, another August Bree, fantastic. So we're just going to hit continue. Let's say we're just biding our time, waiting for lands at the moment. We've got removal, two, two, two different removal spells to get rid of any creatures that he decides to play, which then allows us to get the 5-5. Five, five. But for now, we're just going to keep swinging in with a gutter snipe. 
If I got uh, like something like a bolt of Karanos, I'd be able to uh, do essentially five damage to his face that turn. Yeah, five, seven damage even. So we've got a Dragon Skull Summit, enters the battlefield tapped, unless you control, control a Swamper or a Mountain. Ah, oh, very nice, Krenko's Command. So we're able to play that this turn, which will allow me to do two damage to his face with the with the gut snipe, which is always good. Gives me a couple of extra blockers. Hit continue, so we'll swing in with the gut snipe. Like so. So I don't know what cards he's got that he can't play with seven land. That's pretty insane, unless he's like looking for some kind of like crazy like one turn kill kind of thing. But at the moment, I seem to be quite on top. So he's got no creature down, obviously, and he's just gone straight to combat, which is interesting, so um, can't play the Vicious Hunger, and even if we, well, I can't, <laughs> even if we could play the Vicious Hunger, so say we had two black lands, I still couldn't play it, because, um, he's got nothing on the board, so I'm going to swing in with the Gutter Snipe, and the, uh, one of my goblins, which will do three damage to his face, very nice, so he's down to five, uh, next turn I could swing in with everything, and then to finish him off I could literally remove one of my own creatures and activate the Gutter Snipe's ability. Which could be which could be hilarious, but uh, so he's still not playing anything, which is kind of terrifying. I'm wondering what he's got planned, unless it's just like really bad, shitty cards which he can't play. Which don't do anything. Oh, nice! Here comes the gutter snipe. So I got to play the gutter snipe just to ensure that we actually win. So uh, hit continue. We'll attack with all. So this is hoping that he doesn't have anything. What's he got then? Shock. So that's going to shock my gutter snipe, I'm guessing. It's annoying. Shouldn't have swung in with my gutter snipe there. I do have my quest for the Gravy Lord, however. So I'm going to pop that. So I've got a 5-5. Uh, what's he got then? Another shock. So not the end of the world. I would have shocked my second gutter snipe, personally. So I do one damage to the face this turn. And then we've got, we've got a third shock. So he had lots of shocks in hand. Yeah, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have swung in with that gutter snipe. I should have activated the ability beforehand just to be on the safe side. Um, so we're just gonna hit continue for now. So he's burnt through quite a few three of his shocks there, which is not the end of the world. As a searing spear. So goodbye, my second gutter snipe. Um, that's all we've got here then. Deals three damage to target creature or player. Um, uh, we we'll we'll hit continue. I'm guessing he's gonna be able to kill off my five five this turn. He's got to have something else. No, so he's just randomly done... No, there we go. So that's what I'm waiting for. Searing Spear. He's going to be able to do... Yep, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. Another Ulcerate. So, um... I'm just going to hit continue. We're going to swing him with the Gut Snipe. So he's burnt through pretty much all of his removal spells now. And I've just drawn into absolutely zero land, which is kind of annoying. So I've got him down to three, so next turn he's dead, because I can swing him with the gut snipe and then use one of my... No, I can't do that, actually, because um... so I'm hoping he plays a creature. Nope, not going to play a creature, so give me something good. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Doesn't have a creature, so that's kind of useless. So he's going to swing with the gut snipe, activate, and there's nothing really... I actually, I could play the tribute to hunger. He doesn't have a creature, but... It'll activate the Guts Knight's ability, which uh, wins me the match. Excellent. So, uh, oh, I, like, I like the achievement. Tomb Raider. Nice. So, uh, defeat the Anaki Shaman. Excellent. So, plane unlocked. We're on to the Zendikar, the final plane. And a new booster. So, let's see if we got any good stuff. I haven't got many. I've got most of the uh, Ravnica and Innistrad cards unlocked now. I'm literally just waiting on... Ooh, Assassinate. That's pretty good. Finally unlocked one of them. Might be a space for that in this deck. I'm not sure. Um, I'm tempted to put the Meteors in this deck just because they do two damage and then you can essentially tap any colour, which is really cool. So, um, what have we got then? Broodkeeper <clears throat> and a Jaira, Master Polymorphist. Fair enough. So, we're on to uh, Zendikar now. Having defeated the Shaman, you smash the Ancient Altar. Within it, you find a strange crystal orb. In its depths, depths you see a vast swamp and the hulking form of the demon Ob Nixilis. Perhaps this object can help you track him down. So we're going to uh, move on to Zendikar now. I think we just did Chandelar, so now we're on to Zendikar. Yep, Zendikar. So, strength in numbers. So I'm guessing this is going to be some kind of um, mass 
zom uh, mass zombie what am I on about goblin deck by the looks of things so even as you hunt Garrick you know he hunts you but he is not the only danger you face a band of Zendikari toughs block your way they, de they demand your treasure and won't give up without a fight so uh my removal deck is obviously going to be work quite well against this kind of thing so um it's not a bad hand I'm gonna keep it because I've got the I've got the Blood Praise DNA and I've got the Krenko's Command to play, which is fairly good. And I've also got Gut Snipe, and I love Gut Snipe. It's one of my favourite cards in this deck, just because um, it just takes advantage of the sheer amount of instant and sorcery spells I've got running through this deck. So nice a third land, so we have to get the Gut Snipe down on turn three. I'm not too keen on playing Blood Craze DNA quite yet, not until I know that I can keep the board clear every turn, so it can swing in without. Um, Oh, there's the black land I was looking for as well. So we should play you and yeah, let's, actually let's play the Blood's Crazy Neonate. It won't, it won't be able to swing in this turn, so it's not the end of the world. And then next turn, anything that comes up, I should be able to remove using Ulcerate. So, so he's got nothing down so far. Excellent. So Blood Crazy Neonate can swing in pretty much straight away. Uh, I will be playing the Gutter Snipe at the end of the turn to start taking advantage of things like Krenko's Command and Ulcerate doing damage to my opponent's face. So, is he doing anything? Nope. So this gets pumped up to a 3-2. Excellent. Start the ball rolling on that. We'll get the Gutter Snipe in play as well. So I've got three instants and sorceries, which is quite cool. So my Seismic Strike will deal three damage to a creature. Krenko's Command will obviously summon two goblins. Ulcerate is minus three, minus three, but does... Sa Ooh, excellent. So the mount... So this, uh, my Seismic Strike is looking more and more tasty every turn. So we're going to play Krenko's Command this turn. It will, will still allow me to play the Ulcerate on my opponent's turn, so... I'm not too fussed about that. Gives me some extra blockers. Hit continue. Um, I'll swing in with both of these just because he's got an empty board. I know he's got banners open, but if he wants to remove my creatures, then um, he's going to have to do so pre or post combat anyway. So that gets pumped up to a 4-3. I haven't seen any creatures so far. What's going on with this deck? This is supposed to be Planeswalker difficulty, I promise. <laughs> I still ne I've still never pumped it down. I'm doing quite well. Quite pleased with myself, playing the whole game on Planeswalker. So, ah, it's a red-white deck. Interesting. So it's kind of similar to my... It's like a red-white weenies deck. But he still hasn't got any creatures down, which is kind of sad for him. Uh, one more land, and we get the Charmbreaker Devils. One more black land, and we can get the Indulgent Tormentor down. So I'm just going to attack with all. To be, to be fair, he's got nothing on the board, and unless he suddenly plays, like... A Krenko's Command or... Nope, nothing. So he's down to three. Interesting. Like, I'm kind of half tempted just to seismic strike one of my own creatures, but I don't really need to do that, so I'm just going to bide my time. Like, my Blood Craze Neonate is up to a 5-4 already, and finally he's played a creature, Undo Cleric. So whenever Undo Cleric or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain life equal to the number of allies you control. Fair enough. So, you're going to be removed, like, straight away. Goodbye. <laughs> Got a snipe activates. Tell you what, watch, watch this. This is the win on this turn. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, that was a fairly easy encounter. I was expecting that to be far harder. Ah, oh, Zendikar, what do we get? Give me... There's one card I really want from Zendikar. Ooh, more shocks, that. Could possibly go in this deck. But uh, what am I looking for? So I am looking for... Ah, Nimbus Wings. That's pretty good. Go my Aura deck. Tectonic Rift. Destroy target land. Uh, quest for the Gravelord. Fairly good for this deck. Only need, really need one, though. Uh, I'm, what I'm looking for is Armored Ascension. I remember what it's called. That's the card I'm looking for from uh, Zendikar. One of my favourite cards. Core Canyon. So it looks like we're uh, facing the core this, uh, this turn. So things like Spirit Dancer. Stuff like that. So you, you, show the, you show the Zendikari that you're not an easy prey, and they're willing to answer your inquiries. They point you towards a series of narrow canyons that will take you to Gul'draz, the lair of Ob Nixilis. But the canyons are home to the acrobatic core who consider you an enemy. Oh, that's not very nice. I've never done anything to them. I'm about to kick them in the face, but uh, I'm going to draw a new hand. That's not the best one. Um, I'm kind of tempted to keep this one. I've got no black land, but uh, let's, let's have to draw a new hand. Uh, that's slightly better. I've got one of each, so hopefully I can draw into a land fairly quickly. If not, this might be a fairly quick restart. 
what we got then so we got trusty so yep i know what an equipment is thank you very much so trusty machete quick breach gets plus two plus one the two mana equip cost so obviously he's just uh, getting it down the board ready to equip to a creature so we'll play a swamp just in case he plays anything that would require me to remove it with the ulcerate so i'm hoping to draw into a land fairly quickly and then i can start using my removal spells so I'm guessing this is probably going to be a mono white deck. So we've got Kite Sail Apprentice. As a, as long as Kite Sail Apprentice is equipped, it gets plus one, plus one, and flying. So fairly terrifying for me. So I'll probably want to ulcerate that, depending on what land I draw. Nope, ulcerate is off the tables because I'm going to do Vicious Hunger. It. Vicious Hunger is uh, so it deals two damage. I get two life. Slightly better than ulcerate as I lose life instead of uh, gaining life. So slightly bad card there. This costs two mana as opposed to one. So the the losing life is the extra mana cost. Whereas uh, this one had more benefits and disadvantages. So what have we got then? Stoneforge Mystic. Ah. <clears throat> so uh, he can basically... Um, when Stoneforge Mystic enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So apparently this card was absolutely crazy. They used it in some like deck back in the day for like really like heavy sifting of equipments. And then you may put an equipment card from your hand onto the battlefield just for paying two mana. So, so say for example the equipment had like a um, five mana cost, that core um <clears throat> that core um artificer can actually just pay like two mana and just put an artifact onto the board straight away. So I will probably be ulcerating that, or no, I can't bolt of Koran on it as I only have one red land. So actually, no, tribute to hunger might be slightly better. Yeah, tribute to hunger this time. I'll save the ulcerate until I really need to use it. So I'll get one life back from that. I will be able to play bolt of Koran on any uh, creatures next turn, or I've even got seismic strike, which will deal two damage next turn, as I have I will have two mountains down. So I'm hoping I draw into one of my creatures soon. So we've got core cartographer. Uh, you may search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So I'm basically just trying to keep the number of creatures he's got on the board down at the moment until I can find my own creatures. Just digging around. Ah, oh, excellent. Gutter Snipe. That's what I like to see. So I'll play Gutter Snipe this turn. That might get equipped and it might do some damage to me. Might do four damage, but I'm above. Uh, or I could just ulcerate it. That works for me as well. Just get rid of it. I've got Seismic Strikes and Bolts of Kranos uh, knocking around for later on. That does activate my Gutter Snipe anyway, which uh, keeps me happy. So, now I've got this down. I'll be able to start taking advantage of... Uh, these two will, will obviously allow me to do at least four damage to uh, to, their, to his face. So what have we got then? We have another Core cool Cartographer. Fair enough. So that's going to be Seismic Strike this turn. So he gets another land down, but don't bother me. So he's going to, he's going to equip it. Fair enough. Oh no, that's gone up to three damage now. So looks like it's gonna be Bolt of Karanos on that instead. So creatures, you go snipe activates. I get to scry. Uh, top, excellent. Yep, I'll keep the uh, shock on top as it is a one mana, one mana removal spell. So I can't complain too much. So I'll be able to swing him for two this turn. Excellent, marvelous. So he's got one card in hand now. Like I said, I'm, I've, uh, I thought I've, I've done quite well here to try and maintain the board control, which is quite nicely. So he's now got nothing that he can play, which is uh, good for me. Shock will stay. I'll play Krenko's Command. It'll do two damage directly to his face. I do have the Shock as well, but we're just going to swing him with a Gut Snipe this turn. I'd rather save Shock to either finish him off with or to deal damage to a creature. I don't want to use it too prematurely in case I run out of steam, which hopefully I won't now, as I've got the I've got the board control, I've got the uh, card advantage. I don't have a land advantage, he's got a crazy amount of land, but... Uh... <clears throat> oh, excellent, another, another removal spell, another instant removal spell. Can't complain too much there. So, we'll just attack with all. Marvellous, so I'll deal four damage here. Could potentially do another four. So I could get him down to eight, which is essentially. Um, so he's down to six. Players. I think I've won this turn, actually, because I can just do tribute to hunger as well, because that's going to do a four damage. There we go. And then tribute to hunger. Doesn't really matter what, what I do, me or him, but I do two damage to the cause. So uh, there we go. Excellent. Been a good episode today. Rinse through three encounters. So uh, new booster unlocked. What goodies do we get? Stomper Club, Cub even, Covenant of Blood, 
<clears throat> this is um, one of those cards I was consi I'm considering making a black white life gain deck and this is one of those cards which looks pretty awesome so uh, you gain you I deal four damage to target creature or player and you gain four life and then there's like cards which basically allow you to deal damage to the opponent if you um, what's the word I'm looking for if you uh, gain life as well so that could be pretty crazy quest for the goblin lord uh, and dot another indulgent tormentor but overall um, not looking too bad, so it's a fairly successful episode. What what we've we got for next time? So we've uh, we've got Roiling Plane, then we've got that demon, and then the final encounter will be Garrick. So uh, excellent. So I think that is going to be taking on the Royal, which is kind of like a shape shifting weird entity thing, from what I remember of facing one in Magic 2014. So there we go. That's going to be the end of the episode today. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. Apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.